Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about stereoisomerism and particularly optical isomers. Now optical isomers are only relevant for level 3 of NCEA. Okay, so optical isomers, otherwise known as an antiomers, are compounds that form non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Okay, so that's like your left and your right hand. If you look at them, they look pretty much the same, but they're actually just mirror images of each other. They're non-superimposable, they're not the same. You can't fit your left hand in a right-handed glove, you can't fit your left foot in a right shoe. Okay, to make this happen, you need a chiral or asymmetric carbon. A carbon which is attached to four different atoms or groups of atoms. Okay. That allows them to form these non-superimposable mirror images. All parts of that statement are important when it comes to defining what makes an optical isomer. And optical isomers are named because the two different enantiomers are able to rotate a plane of polarised light in equal and opposite directions. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So non-superimposable mirror images these are things, like I say, like your left and right hand, okay? These are really important compounds biologically. They make up a lot of drugs and biological molecules. Amino acids, carbohydrates, um, all sorts of things like that. Um, many drugs from paracetamol, I think. Actually, I'm not sure about paracetamol, so don't quote me on that one. Um, through thalidomide and all the way through to methamphetamine. They are all optically active compounds. Now, if you are interested in finding out more about thalidomide, I would highly recommend you read up about that. It is an incredibly cautionary tale of both the importance of understanding optical isomerism and also the importance of drug testing. But before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit more about what is required in this standard regarding optical isomerism. Okay, so optical isomers. These are compounds that have four different atoms or groups of atoms attached to a central carbon atom. And I want to show you what we're talking about with that. So if we have a look at this molecule here, this is butan-2-ol. And it is one that commonly comes up in exams because it is so straightforward. Similar versions are 2-chlorobutane or 2-bromobutane or similar things. These are some of the simplest molecules you can have that form optical isomers although they are by no means the only ones that they may test you on. So if we look at this, this carbon-2, where the alcohol is connected, has four different atoms or groups of atoms attached to it. It has a hydrogen, a hydroxyl, a methyl, and an ethyl group. And the first thing you have to do if you're being asked to draw a pair of optical isomers is actually to identify what are the four groups that are attached, which one is my chiral carbon, and what are the four groups. Once you've identified that, drawing these is actually very straightforward. At least it's very straightforward if you follow some simple rules. The first thing is you have to show these in three dimensions. You cannot draw it flat the way I've just drawn it, and flip it around and draw the mirror image, because actually that doesn't show me the orientation around that central chiral carbon. So, first point is to start off and draw a three-dimensional tetrahedral structure with carbon in the centre. Okay, and this is the general approach we use. So the two straight lines represent the two bonds which are in the same plane as the computer screen or page or whatever you happen to be working on. This wedge that I'm drawing here represents a bond that is coming out of the screen towards the viewer. And this dashed line or squiggly line kind of represents a bond that is going backwards into the page. So it's almost tucked directly behind that central carbon. But of course if we drew it directly behind that central carbon we wouldn't be able to see it. So I recommend drawing it at the top. Sort of out like so. So you can actually see, hopefully, even with my terribly bad drawing, that these two structures look 
kind of like a tetrahedral carbon shape. And all you need to do once you've drawn these, and you can kind of see, I hope, that there is a mirror plane almost between them. Okay, so the left-hand side and the right-hand side are mirror images of each other. So what we're going to do now is put the four groups onto this molecule in a way that mirrors them. I always start with the most complicated group, which in this case is the ethyl group, and I'm going to put that at the top. CH2, CH3. You could draw it out as well, but then the temptation comes to try and draw it in some sort of three dimensions, and that gets messy. CH2, CH3 at the top. The most awkward one usually is the hydrogen, so I usually put that in the back corner. Sorry, the back corner is the most awkward one, so I usually put the hydrogen there because it's the easiest one. You don't need to get complicated with that. The next one I would put on is the OH, and I'm going to show this reflected. So in both cases, that bond is pointing towards the oxygen. So I've got OH on one side and HO on the other. And I'm going to do the same with the CH3. Okay, C, try and draw it slightly neater here, H3. Okay, and H3C on the reverse. So there we have our pair of optical isomers. And in most cases, getting these two drawn correctly is certainly going to get you an achieved point and will get you well along the way to a merit point for your exam. Being able to combine this with your definition, okay, non-superimposable mirror images, car chiral carbon, okay, those things, non-superimposable mirror images, chiral carbon, rotates plane polarized light in equal and opposite directions, and then of course applying that definition to a given molecule or selection of molecules is what we're looking for usually for NCEA. So just a couple of notes about a couple of key terms. First one is chirality, or the presence of a chiral carbon. Okay, now you can say it is a carbon that is attached to four different atoms or groups of atoms. That is great. You should not say that it is four different atoms, because that is incorrect. Okay, because if it's attached to a methyl group and an ethyl group, actually that carbon, chiral carbon, is attached to two different carbon atoms. Okay. Similarly, four different functional groups is not relevant, okay, because a methyl group and an ethyl group are both alkyl chains. So four different atoms or groups of atoms, or simply four different groups, is fine, okay. So you have to draw these three-dimensionally. Now the final point is about the rotation of plane polarised light. And plane polarised light is light that has been through a filter, so it's only travelling in one plane. See, normal light bounces off from a source and it heads out in all three dimensions. Once it's gone through a polarising filter, it's only headed in two dimensions. So that light is heading in a straight line, passes through our unknown compound, and will rotate in one direction or another. So one enantiomer will rotate at x degrees clockwise, and the other enantioma will rotate at x degrees anti-clockwise. Now there is no way to tell by looking at your optical isomers the degree to which it's going to rotate, or whether it's a particular isomer is going to rotate at clockwise or anti-clockwise. That is very much on a case-by-case -case basis, and it has to be determined experimentally. So please do not write in your exam question that isomer A is going to rotate at X to, you know, 90 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees anti-clockwise or whatever. You just don't know. You can't tell by looking at it. Okay. But they do rotate in either clockwise or anti-clockwise directions, equal and opposite. Okay. That's my key points for today. I will see you back in my next video at a later date. Thanks very much, guys.